Amen. I am so grateful for God's goodness, and I'm grateful you're here. Amen. We've been going through a study on the second coming, and uh, last week we covered the believer's uh, reward that's going to be in heaven. We've, we've already went through the rapture. Make sure I got this on. Already went through the rapture of the church because um, we, we dealt with that for three weeks. And we looked at why the church is not going through the tribulation. And that might be just a little loud. Is that a little loud for y'all? We we see if you can turn me down? Amen. Just a little bit. Don't turn me down too much. Amen. Because they'll go, they'll go to sleep on me. Nah. We got a we got a lot to cover today. We really do, and I'm gonna try to I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to be thorough. But and I, I want us to I want us to really look at this because today we're going to look at the tribulation, and we're not going to look at it in depth because there's no way that you can cover the tribulation in depth in in one study. But we'll be covering different portions of the tribulation throughout the study that we're doing, and uh, we'll look at it in in deeper look at that point. But we, we, we've got to remember some things. Number one is that the church does not go through the tribulation. Because where we're at now, we're, we're not looking at it as if it was possible or even looking at it to, to be able to, to preach it. We're looking at it as a definite. It's definitely the church is not in the tribulation. Because the things that you see in the tribulation, if you look at it with the mindset, well, maybe it's the church then, yeah, it's possible to put the church there because there's people saved throughout that time period. There's people that are going to be born again. There's, going to, there's, people that, there, there's things that mentioned that are, that are reflected to what the church looks like, but it's not the church. You see what I'm saying? So we have to have in our mind, and definitely, that the church is not going through the tribulation. Now, if you... If you still have a problem with this, I, I want to encourage you to go back and, and listen to the three sermons that we preached on why the church is not going through the tribulation. And they are about an hour apiece, okay? So there's, there's a lot of information there. I didn't just come up here and just tell you, well, the church is not going through the tribulation, and that's the way it is. Here you go. I, there's reasons why. Number one is, the, the reason is because the church is not Israel. It is not. And it, it, it is, it, it's only, Israel is only recognized one time in all the Word of God where it, as a group of people, as where it says church. And it is referring to a time period back in history, not in the future. It, it is referring to those that are in the wilderness. And it refers to Israel. And that is the very only time that, that, that Israel is ever considered as a word used for church in, the, in, the whole, in, the, in all the word of God. Okay? So we know that the, that the church is not going to go through the tribulation because it's not Israel. You say, well, what does Israel have to do with it? Well, we determined that the tribulation period is set up for Israel. And you say, how, how did we determine that? Well, Daniel chapter number 9. Remember, we, we discussed in Daniel chapter number 9. And we looked in Daniel chapter number 9, and it was, it was a prophecy of 70 weeks. Uh, and, and listen, I, I want you to realize what it actually says it, when, it, when it's saying that. Is it's saying that it's 70 periods of time of seven years. You get that? And what, it, what that equals out to be is it is a time period of 490 years. So in, in the history of, of, of Israel, the time period that we're looking at is 70 periods of time that each one of those periods of time equals 70 or equals seven years. So we need to keep that in mind also as we're doing it. We're going to cover that in just a moment. But the, the main thing that we need to remember is that the church will not go through the tribulation. Because if you're wrestling with that as we're looking at this, you're going to be very, very confused. Because we are looking at the tribulation in the view that the church is not in the tribulation. Nowhere. Nowhere in the tribulation. 
And we looked at a lot of different things, and I, I, don't, I don't have time to preach all that again because I have really a lot of information that I want to give you before we, we get started. Now, the, as we're looking in the second coming, we've looked at the rapture of the church. We looked at the, the reward of the believer. And now the next thing on the, on the agenda of, of, of marching towards the coming of Christ is the tribulation. Is the tribulation. Now, we're living in a time period, and I don't know about you, but uh, for, for I have sensed in the, in the realm of those that are believers uh, a greater desire to see Christ coming back than I have in years. I mean, in, 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 in probably my whole time of being saved, I, I, when, I, when I talk to believers or when I, I, I you know, get around believers, there's such a sense of, of our desire for Christ to come back than I've, than I've seen in my lifetime. And, and if you look in the world's view and all the, there's such a gloom of of, of, of doom that is taking place and, and hopelessness of, of, of what is uh, happening in our world. Uh, there's not, people don't look at the future as being something bright. And they're wondering what's going to take place. Well, I, I want you to know, I, I know and I believe that there's a, a doomsday for man that's coming. But I don't believe that it's because of COVID-19. And I do not believe that it's because of uh, the downfall of the government. And I don't believe that it's because of, uh, of nuclear warfare that's going, that could take place. Or, or I don't believe that it's because of, uh, of uh, global warming. I believe it's because it is predicted in the word of God, a day of doom. And that day of doom that is predicted in the word of God is a time called the tribulation. The tribulation. Now we need to realize that the tribulation is an, an active wrath of God. That it is that it is God pouring his judgment upon the earth. It is not catastrophic things that take place because of our atmosphere or even because of mankind. These are, are used and, and done by God, not by any other source. So for us to look at this, I want us to look at just three simple things. And the reason I say three simple things is because that's all the time that I have. I, uh, I want you to be very patient with me. Because when we look at the, the book of the tribulation, we're going to be generalized as we look at it. And when I say generalize, is that we're not going to dig deep into hardly any of it. But there's some things that I want us to look at. And the first thing that I want us to look at is the, the, the period of time that it occupies. The period of time that the tribulation occupies. And this is another reason why that we believe that the church is not in the tribulation. is because of the period of time that it occupies. Now, if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn back to, to Daniel chapter number 9, we're going to refresh our memory just a little bit. And I've already went over this just a second ago, and I'm going to go over it again. And someone once told me the way of learning is through repetition. Through repetition. And the way that we... we, we uh, I was talking to my son the other day, and he said, I don't know if I'll ever get him to, get him to understand this. And he, I said, well, the, the, someone told me there was 1,500 repetitions uh, in a consistent fashion or in a consistent time period that brought uh, security of understanding. So 
So we can go over this a, a many times, and, and probably 90% of us, when we leave this place and we get in our car and we pull out of the parking lot, we wouldn't be able to tell anybody what we learned. Can I hear amen there? Amen. <laughs> this is true. But I'm going to give you a lot of information, and I, I want you to know that these are, these are recorded videos that, that you can always go on YouTube and, and look up and be able to find and re-look at them if you have any questions. Amen. So we look in Daniel chapter number 9 and verse number 24 is where we'll start out. Now, I want you to notice it says 70 weeks are determined upon the people and upon the holy city. Well, he gives, a, he gives us the number of, of, of the time period that we're looking at. God states that 70 times 7 are 7 periods of seven. And those sevens are seven years were determined to those. And the, the, we, we already said this is this that the total history that it gives in Daniel chapter number, chapter number nine of Israel is 490 years. Now, I want you to realize that that when he talks here, he is talking directly to Israel. This is, not a, this is not the prophecy of the church. This is the prophecy of Israel. You say, how do we know that? Well, when we get to the New Testament, every time that something's mentioned about the church, they say, I reveal a mystery unto you. Why? Because it's not revealed in the Old Testament. The church is not there. It was a mystery. It is not until the New Testament that we find the church. Here is talking to Israel, and this is the time period given. Now, verse number 25 says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore the building, the building, uh, the, the, not the building, the, to build Jerusalem, Unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. All right? So, so we talked about this last uh, week, two weeks ago, and we said that, that from the time that, that, uh, that uh, it was given to them to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild it, to the time that Jesus marched into or rode into, actually, Jerusalem, was the time period that is mentioned here, which is the 69 weeks. And we've already talked about this, so I'm not going to cover it much. But that 69 weeks is the time that is declared there. So if you take 69 and you subtract it from 70, how many weeks do we have left? Nope. There we go, one. One. It's okay, y'all can speak. It don't, I'm going to repeat it so everybody will hear it on camera, amen? We have one week left. Well, from the time period that Jesus rode in on Jerusalem was there, uh, declared king, what happened was Jesus was crucified, buried, and rose again. Why? Because the Jews rejected him as Savior. When he rode in as king and they cried out, Hosanna in the highest, that was Jerusalem's time. That was, that was the, the, their time to be able to say, this is our king. But they didn't. What did they say? They said unto him, said, tell your disciples to quit saying what they're saying. And he said, if, I, if they do, then the rocks will cry out. You know why the rocks would have cried out? Because the word of God had already prophesied that they would cry out, Hosanna in the highest. And, they, and if, if nobody there, there was a human being, would have, would have said a word, the rocks would have cried out to fulfill the prophecy of the word of God to show that he was king. 
we ain't getting very far. I just, I'm going to let y'all know that right now because we're, we're stuck on this right here. But I want you, it's exciting to me. I don't know about you, but it's exciting to me because these things are, are, are bringing us to a place to understand what takes place. Israel rejected and the church started up. When the church started up, God was no longer dealing with Israel as a nation. All through the Old Testament, Israel was born. God dealt with Israel as a nation up to the place where Christ was rejected. God left off. In the book of Acts, the church was, was brought forth. And since that time, God has been dealing with the church through the redemption blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what most theologians call the parenthesis. This is a time period that was unseen, unknown. And when God stops dealing with the church, when does that take place? The rapture. God will stop dealing with the church at the rapture. What, ter- what When is that time period in? We don't know. It is unknown time. But when the rapture takes place and the church is snatched out, then God will go back. And how many weeks did we like? One week. So one week is how many, how many years? Seven years. So we got one last period of seven years that's going to take place, and that is the time period of the tribulation. Seven years. Seven years. Now, let me find my place in our our in my in, in our in, in my notes here. Okay, in, in verse number 27, we we see what takes place. In that last period of seven years, it says, And he shall confirm a covenant with, uh, with many for one week. Okay? Now, the he there that it is talking about is the Antichrist or Satan, whatever one you want to put, okay? It does not matter to me because we know Satan is the one that is that is doing it, the Antichrist will be the one that is implementing it, but he will confirm a covenant for me, with many for one week. One week, seven years. This is the, this is the future or the, the last uh, seven years that, that will be dealt with Israel. Now in the midst of that, it says, and in the midst of that week, he shall cause the sacrifice of uh, of oblation, ob, oblation, and and what it is there that that there's going to be in the middle of that week, in the midst of that week. Can anybody tell me what the middle day of the week is? Wednesday. In the middle of the middle day of, I mean, the middle time period of Wednesday is twelve o'clock. That's half the day. Depends on where you start, but anyway, that, that's half the day. So, so you're going to have three and a half is middle. Do we agree with that? Amen. So, so we're dealing with seven years, so we're looking at three and a half years. So he's, gonna, he's going to give to Israel... A covenant by which he's going to obtain a, until three and a half years. And then there's going to be a great defiling that's going to take place. And Israel, in the middle of that week, in the, at the end of that three and a half years, and Israel is going to flee. They're going to flee. 
And we'll look at that a little later on. So, it's in the middle of that week that this takes place. And we see that in Daniel chapter number 9 and verse number 27. Now, the tribulation period is, is, divided into, uh, is seven and divided into two portions. Because we've got three and a half, uh, three and a half uh, uh, years, and then we have three and a half years. We saw the division. It's in the middle of the week that something takes place, and then something changes. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But we could, we could actually put a category over each one of them, and then one of them is called the tribulation. And then the second part is called the great tribulation. The great tribulation. In Revelation chapter number 7 and verse number 14, it says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation. This is referring to those that will come through the great tribulation. Now, I also want you to know that as we're looking at Scripture, that a lot of times we're going to look at things that are talking future but haven't happened yet because of the fact that there's no chrono chronological order is given in the book of Revelation to, to a certain place. And then there are some that are in chronological order. And then also in the book, in the Gospels, we'll look at some things that we can't determine that are in chronological order either. But the first three and a half years of time period, uh, and, and then the second three and a half year time period. And say, so, well, we know this to be true. Look in Daniel chapter number seven in verse number 25. In Daniel chapter number 7 and verse number 25, it gives us that exact time period, three and a half years. It says, and he shall speak great words. We're, we're talking once again about the Antichrist against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Okay, if we have time, how many do we have? We have one. I'll help you all out just a little bit. We have one because it's time. But if we have times, we have two. And if we take those two and we add them together, how many do we have? We have three. Now, if we take time, just one, and we, and we divide it, we have a half, right? So that's three and a half years. So here we have the time period given to us, three and a half years, which is the time that the Antichrist will have total dominion. You say, well, what about the other three and a half years? Well, he'll have, he'll have dominion over, over, over that time period too but I want you to see what happens what takes place because there's a time period that takes place uh, where he has no other place to go but the earth and hopefully we'll be able to see that today too uh, so the time given is is time and time and the dividing of time which, which is simply stated we see this again in uh, Revelation chapter number, excuse me, Revelation chapter number 12. Now, I want you to notice in Revelation chapter number 12, you can go, over, go ahead and turn over there. We're going to be there for just a moment, what's taking place. Uh, in Revelation chapter number 12, there's a great battle that takes place. And, and Michael and his archangels are, are warring against Satan and his angels. And they're cast out of heaven. They're cast down to the earth. And there, he, he, Satan was the prince of power in the air before, but he had access in, in between heaven and earth where he would go and stand before the Father, and, and there he would accuse the brethren day and night. But here, after the warfare, he, has, he loses in Revelation chapter number 
12 and verse number 7 says, and, and, they, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. Verse number 12 says, and the great dragon was cast out, and the, and the serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, and they were cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. So, I want you to get the picture here because we're looking at the tribulation and what's taking place. The, 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 there's a warfare that takes place in heaven and Satan and all of his angels that once had the ability to be here on earth, in the air, or up in heaven, now only have one place that they can be and that is down here on the earth. They're cast down to the earth. Now, in Revelation chapter number, uh, chapter number 12, uh, there's, we see the, let me make sure that I didn't skip anything. We, we have three characters that are given to us in chapter number 12. There is the woman, there's the child, and there is the dragon. Now, it's very, it's very important that we realize who these are as we're looking at them. The woman there is Israel. The dragon is the devil, and the child is Christ, is Christ. Now, he is, he is going to come here on earth, and he is going to, it is going to be a tormented time. Why? Well, look in verse number 12. Verse number 12, at the, at the latter end, it says this right here. It says, For the devil is come down unto, un, unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he, that he hath but a short time. The devil's going to know that his time is short because of the fact that he has been cast out of heaven. And, 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 and listen, uh, I want you to get it in your mind right now. The devil already knows he's defeated. He knows at the cross of Calvary, he knew he was defeated. He knows he's defeated. His only object now is to take as many people to hell with him as he can or to the lake of fire, whichever one you want to call it. He comes, he is cast out of heaven. He's not, he has not the ability to withstand the, the, the host of heaven. He knows he can't overthrow it. The only chance he has now is to destroy and to terrorize the earth. When this war takes place, the world is going to be bombarded with, with the wickedness of all the host of angels that followed Satan at this time period. And what are they going to do? They're going to pursue the woman. They're going, to, they're going to chase after Israel. They're going to, they're going to make war with her. Now, this is, this is after that time of peace when his, he is revealed. And the Bible says that there, there, there's going to be a place for her in the wilderness. There's going to be a place for her in the wilderness. This is the time period that is described to us at three and a half years that is called the Great Tribulation, when Satan will be cast down out of heaven unto earth. This is the midst of the week that Daniel speaks of in Daniel chapter 9, the same time period. The first part of the week, the three and a half years, Israel has a covenant with the Antichrist. And the worship of Israel like it was in the old will take place once again in the temple. But at the, at the time period when Satan breaks that covenant, there's something that takes place. In Revelation chapter number 13, it says this right here. It says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth, 
by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the, uh, wounded by, by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as uh, would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So in chapter number 13, we have a picture of what takes place in the breaking of this covenant. And, and you might, it, it, it's going to come a little clearer a little bit later on, I, I, I'm going to show you. But, but the, he's going to build this image. Me personally, I believe it's going to be placed inside the temple in Jerusalem. And I believe, I believe that, that that is why Israel is going to rebel against him because of that. Now, in verse number 6 of chapter number 12, it tells us that this woman's going to flee in the wilderness, and she is going to be in the wilderness, uh, she's going to flee in the wilderness, and there she'll be fed and kept. And listen to what it says here in verse number 6. It says, and shall be fed uh, and shall feed her a thousand and two hundred and three score days. Does anybody want to guess how long that is? That's three and a half years that God's going to take care of Israel in the wilderness during the time period that Satan is going to pursue her. There's going to be a great there's going to be a great army that pursues her in verse number 16. And the Bible says that there that the earth is going to open up and going to swallow them up. Like a flood. Because Satan's desire is no more than to make war with that woman that gave seed to say, uh, to, to, uh, which is Christ. And we find that in verse number 12, uh, chapter number 12 and verse number 17. It says, went, went to make war with the remnant of her seed. His desire will be to stomp out Israel. You say, well, will there, during this time period, how many people are going to die? Well, if you went, if you went to, to Zechariah chapter number 13 and verses 8 and 9, it says that, it says that one third, it says two parts will be cut off and only one third of Israel will be remaining. That's how many people are going to die from the slaughter of Satan or the Antichrist during this time. This is a, a time period of great tribulation of three and a half years, the, the last part of seven years. In Revelation chapter number 11, we have it once again the same time period. It says in verse number three, and I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. How many days is that? One hundred and, uh, I'm sorry, 1,260, which is the period of three and a half years that is given. Just one more time in, in Revelation chapter 11 and verse number 2, it, it gives that, that the, the, it says, for it is given unto, talking about the courts of the temple, it says it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall be treaded underfoot for 40 and two months, three and a half years. It doesn't matter how you, how you do it. The time period of the tribulation is going to be seven years, which is split up in, into three and a half year periods. You say, well, that, that, that tells us the, the time, that it, the period that is given to it. But what about the plan? Well, if we look in, in Zephaniah chapter number one, we see the plan of God of the tribulation. It is spelled out. God, God reveals the, the tribulation in, in such detail. 
It says in verse number 12, it says this right here. It says, and it shall come to pass in that time that I will stretch, I will search Israel with a candle and, and, and punish the men that, that are set on their, on their lees. That's a very interesting phrase. You might want to underline it in your Bible because of what it means. It means uh, habitual sins, and they're locked into the habit of it. They cannot overcome it. That say in their heart, the Lord will not go, uh, will not do good, neither will he do evil. They're talking as if God is not even there anymore. Verse number 13 says, Therefore their goods shall become a booty, and their houses desolate. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall, they shall plant vineyards and not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteneth greatly. Now, Brother Johnny did a study a while back, and the, the study he did was on the day of the Lord. And it is the same time period of the tribulation, the day of the Lord. That day is a day of wrath, verse number 15. Is a day of wrath, a day of trouble, a day of distress, a day of wastefulness, a day of destruction, a day of darkness, a day of gloom, a day of, uh, of uh, cloud and thick darkness, a day of trumpets alarming against the fenced city and against the high towers. God states that, there, that through the prophet that there is coming a day of judgment, and this day of judgment is called the day of the Lord. That is the tribulation period. You could even say that man has that 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 man has has taken and has defiled God for so long. Now God is going to revenge and give judgment on this earth. God, in a sense, man has had his day. Now God will have his day. Judgment will fall. There's going to be great destruction. In verse number 17, he goes on. He says, and, and there shall bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men because, they're, uh, because of, they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall, shall be poured out at, as dust, and their flesh shall be as dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them. In the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by fire, by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Destruction. This is this is what God had told Israel before the New Testament of the tribulation period that was coming. That he would have a time period that would be great tribulation of fiery judgment and trials. Now let's look a little bit about what the New Testament says about the tribulation period. In Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 3, Many people want to put this because it is found in the time period of the New Testament that this is the church. But this is not. This is not the church, nor was it written to the church. It was written about Israel and what was to come of Israel. They asked the Lord two questions. Verse number three, it says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be? That's question number one. What shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? That's question number two. Now I want to look at these as we, as we answer these questions and look at what Jesus says. Now, I want you to realize that, that, that it's almost impossible to take these, this chapter and, and, and 
correlate it with the book of Revelation because it's hard to place the things just exactly for there to be. But I want you to see what he says about it. That we'll have a better understanding of what takes place during the tribulation. And Jesus answered them and said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So the first thing we have, we have deceivers. Now, I want you to realize that this is not during the church period. This is during the tribulation. We're talking a different time period. Even though we have people today that stand up and say they have Christ, and we have warnings of that by Paul in the New Testament to the church. But this is to, about from Christ to the Jews. Church is not in it, it has not been founded yet. This is to the Jews. And so he's warning the Jews that there are going to be people that come to say that they're Christ. And shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and ye shall be troubled. Now this is where a lot of people get confused because they say, well, this is during our time period because we're in this. We see this. It's still going to be going on during the tribulation, even though there'll be time of peace in 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 uh, in in. And as such as in Israel, for a brief period of time, there'll still be wars that are going on and rumors of wars. And even though the Antichrist will have a hand in everything that's going on around the world, there'll still be little pockets of wars and rumors of wars that'll be taking place at the beginning of and then through the, the first three and a half years of the tribulation. And that is where many get confused. They say, this is talking about the church age. This is, this is all going to happen during the church age. No, no, no. We're in the tribulation. And nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes and, and, and diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. This is not the sorrow. This is the beginning of sorrow. Listen, I want to tell you something. My wife, she, when she got pregnant, can I tell you there was a time period that we didn't even know that she was pregnant. Uh, some of you ladies would know that. But when we found out, she didn't start revealing that she was pregnant until a little further down the way. Well, this phrase that is given here, the beginning of sorrows, is as that of, of, a, of a woman that is pregnant and then as it becomes closer to the end of her delivery she starts giving signs of birth and he said these things right here are are just going to be the the beginning of the signs for them to look for the beginning of the signs but it says this time of sorrow is not yet he says, and then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations. Who is he talking about there? He's not talking about the church. He's talking about Israel. Israel is going to be hated of all nations. And they're going to want to kill them. I mean, we have it today, but this is going to be in magnitude. For my name's sake. Why? Because he was born a Jew. He was born a Jew. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. And they shall hate one another. There are even going to be brethren that are going to betray brethren. And the false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's false believers. 
Listen, they are false believers today, but they're going to be false believers in this time period. And the only way you're going to know them apart is that they're going to fall away. Look at verse number 13. It says, but he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. People want to put that on the church and say, listen, as long as you believe in Christ and you endure, you're going to heaven. That's a, that's a lie from hell. This is talking about Israel during a, 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 a time by which they're going to have to endure to be saved. I mean, they're going to have to endure unto death for many of them. And that is going to, that is going to show their salvation. Those that fall away are going to be those that were not true believers. Now, it says in verse number 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom, that's another indicator right there who he's talking to. The kingdom gospel was preached unto the Jews. What, do we, what is preached unto the church? Does anybody know? It's the gospel of grace. It's not the gospel of the kingdom. shall be preached unto the world. And we know that in the book of Revelation, and, and I've got it written down here. I know I'm trying to, trying to hurry through some of this. But it, it, that, there's, that there's going to be 144,000 Jews that are saved and the two witnesses, and they're going to evangelize the whole world in three and a half years. They're going to evangelize the whole world. There's going to be a multitude of people saved. You say... That's incredible. It is incredible that God's going to deal with the Jews and he's going to save them. He is. Now, the second question that was asked was, what shall the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Well, in verse number 15 starts, that signs that are given. He said, he said, first of all, he says, he says in verse number 15, he says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by the da uh, Daniel, the prophet, listen what it says, stand in the holy place. Did you get that right there? That's why I believe that the statue is going to be in the holy place because the desolation of abomination it's going to stand in the holy place. He said, whosoever reads, let him understand. Then let them which are in Jerusalem flee into the mountains. You remember in the book of Revelation, we talked about the woman. She fled into the wilderness. This is exactly what it's talking about there. It said, this is the beginning of the great tribulation. It says, then it talks about the urgency of, of them leaving. And it is given to us in, in verse number 17 through verse number 19, where it talks about their travel, by uh, whether they be on the housetop, whether, whether they have children, whether they're, they're wherever they're at, they just are, are traveling on the, sab excuse me, on the Sabbath day. But listen to what it says in verse number 21. It says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, even shall be. There's not ever been a time on earth that, that's experienced what's going to take place, and there never will be in history in all of humanity except when God's wrath is poured out. Verse number 22 says, If, if these days weren't shortened, man would not be able to live. It says, except these days be, should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, and those are Israel, and the Gentile nations by which get saved, shall those days be shortened. Verse number 23 says, Then... If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there is Christ, believe it not. This was the warning by which he gave to Israel 
of the coming time. I don't know about you, but it, it excites me to see that Christ is warning them of the judgment time of God. In verse number 27 and verse number 28, he tells us that this time will come like lightning. What he's saying that this is going to be a judgment, it's going to be fast and furious. And then he tells us if you want to learn or know more about it, he says, learn the parable of the fig tree in verses 30. 2 through 33. And I, I don't have time to cover that, but when he talks about learning the fig tree, he's talking about uh, as Israel is, is mentioned, the fig tree in the Old Testament many times, and this is a picture of Israel. Now, I want you to know something. A lot of people believe that it, when Israel became a nation, that this was Israel putting on, that this was a fulfilling of the prophecy, and it may well be, okay? It may well be. I was listening to uh, J. Vernon McGee. If y'all have been on your, your on the bus and you've been listening to J. Vernon McGee, you'd heard the same thing. He was talking about the period of time by which uh, Israel will bring forth uh, uh, the, uh, the fulfillment completely. He said it is as if the, the, the Valley of Bones, if you remember in the book where the, uh, the, the prophet spoke to the bones and the bones come together. You remember that? And then they spoke to the bones again and they started putting on muscle. And then it spoke to them again and they put on flesh. And then he breathed the life into them. See, the fulfillment of the truth, the complete fulfillment of the prophecy of Israel being a nation has not yet become full because of the fact that they have not came to the awareness of Christ being king. The fulfillment of that prophecy will be complete in the tribulation period when they will recognize Christ and they'll be saved through the tribulation period. Now, I almost want to stop right here. I'll be honest with you because I, 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 I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to start right there because we, we've only looked at, we've looked at two things. We looked at the way that God, God revealed it in the Old Testament, how Jesus talked about it in the New Testament, but the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation and what it reveals about the tribulation and the terror that takes place. I am going to give you my end, the ending of it, though, because I don't want to leave you with just that. Why, why is it important for the Bible to have the, the book of Revelation. I mean, it, it, we're not going to be here anyway. Why do we need it? Well, we need it because it reveals some things to us. Number one, it reveals to us, it reveals to us that God is going to deal with Israel again. It tells us that God is going to deal with Israel again. And he's going to deal with them in two ways. He's going to, he's going to punish them and he's going to save them. Through the tribulation. But he doesn't, it doesn't just stop there. He, it reveals to us that God, even in his wrath, is gracious unto the Gentiles. Because he's going to deal with them and save them also. And we see that in Revelation chapter number 7, in verse number 9. It says, after... After this I beheld and lo a multitude which which no man can number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues shall shall be uh, shall uh, shall stand before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white raiment uh, with palms in their hands. This is a picture of those that are saved through the tribulation. Now listen to what he says. It doesn't just reveal the purpose that he's still dealing with people, even though he is punishing the things that are taking place. It, the, the purpose of the tribulation lets sin run its complete course, and God crushes it at the end. The book of Revelation, the purpose of the, for, for the, the tribulation period also shows us how much God really hates sin. Really hates sin. 
He hates it. He doesn't desire, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't like it in our life. He doesn't desire us to be around it. He doesn't, desire, he doesn't desire us to be in it, but he does desire us to love sinners. God hates sin, but he loves sinners. I'm so grateful that the Bible says, whosoever will, amen? I'm so grateful that the Bible says, that if you'll come unto him, he'll not cast you out. See, we need to know these things. We need to know these things. Next week, we're, we're, we'll, we'll, I don't know if we'll cover what's in the book. of You need to read chapter number, chapter number 6, and then chapter number 8, and then chapter number 16 of the book of Revelation. And it reveals everything that takes place on earth. It's imaginable. I mean, we, you can't even imagine the horror of it. The next week, we're going to, we're, we'll go through it just a little bit before we get into next week's message. And all this comes about because of one thing. I thought about this. I really did. I thought about this. Because the Bible says, the Bible says that there's going to be a time period when all the people on earth are going to cry out. At, at one time, they're going to cry out, fall on us to the mountains and to the rocks and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. They, I remember when, when Adam was in the garden. You remember that? And God came walking through in the cool of the evening. And he cried out for Adam. And Adam hid himself from God because of the sin. The sin's going to be so great on earth that every man is going to cry out for the sin to be hidden that he couldn't be seen of God. My friend, I want to tell you something. Sin is a destroyer of mankind by which we have the remedy. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ and his blood was shed for mankind that whosoever would, that any person that chooses can be saved today if we'll only believe. That's the message we need to preach. That's what, that's what we're to tell people. And oh, we are to be fearful because one day those that don't believe will go through this time period that's mentioned in the Word of God. And what a day of great tribulation that's going to be. Let's stand together. Father, I thank you so much for your good grace and mercy. Lord, I pray you'll help us. Help us, Lord. Burden our heart for those that we see. That we not see them as rich, poor, black, white, Successful, unsuccessful. Lord, that we would see them as a soul in this world. Knowing the destiny by which sin will take them. Lord, I love you and thank you for all that you do for us. Bless and have your will, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. What are we going to sing, brother? <clears throat> Number 144, Only Trust Him. 144 in your hymnal.
trusting in his word only trust him only trust him only trust him now he will save you he will save you he will save you now amen well Listen, if, you, if there's anybody that ever has a doubt of their salvation, I want them to know those that are looking, that are watching or those that are here in person, that you can come see me. Amen. It would be my privilege and my pleasure to talk with you and to show you what the Word of God says, that your sins be forgiven and that you walk with Christ. I'd love to do that anytime. Until then, may you have a great week. Be back with us tonight as we'll be going through the book of Matthew. And then Wednesday night, Brother Johnny's going through Genesis. We're having a great time in the Word of God. Amen. Shake hands with one another and you're dismissed.